Christmas is probably my favorite time of the year, so when we come to the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord in the end of the Christmas season, you know, I get a little sad because this is, the, the Christmas season is filled with such peace and such joy, and when, it, when we have to take all the decorations down, it's just a bit disappointing and sad. But what gives many people a sense of hope or of a way to move forward is making New Year's resolutions. My brother's a big New Year's resolutions guy. I'm not particularly one, but I was chatting with a friend of mine about New Year's resolutions, and, and she was asking me, well, what, what would yours might be, Father? And, and since I'm not like that, I had to think of on the top of my head. Well, so I came up with a few, four things. I'm going to read more, watch less TV, be a little bit more patient, and maybe do a little bit more cooking. I cook. But naturally, of course, when somebody asks you a question like that, you respond, well, what are yours? She said, well, I am intend to listen first. I intend to pray, to pray first and to pray more. I told her I think hers were a little better than mine. <laughs> Maybe I needed to think it through just a little bit more. But that whole conversation just sort of got me thinking, more and more about resolutions, what resolutions are and why we make them. A resolution implies that there's something to be changed, there's a, there, that there's a problem that needs a solution, if you will. They're indicative of the fact that we want to make changes about ourselves in order to make the coming year a little better, a little brighter, more fruitful, more joy-filled, maybe a little, even a little bit more meaningful. Same can be said, perhaps, for what's happening in the gospel. People going to John the Baptist to be baptized, and St. John tells us that his baptism was, I'm baptizing you, it's just a baptism of repentance. There's one mightier than I that's coming. But yet people were going to him anyway to acknowledge their sins, to repent of their sins, to make a resolution. I'm going to change something about my life because someone greater is coming. Something great is happening and I want to be ready for it. It was an outward way of expressing a sorrow for sin and a need to make an amendment of their lives. But John's baptism just remains solely that. It's an, it's an external, it's an outward sign. Only the one who can drench us inwardly with his grace can really make those transformations from within. And yet he shows up to be baptized too. How odd is that? That the one who we believe to be the very son of God shows himself, presents himself to be baptized by John. But yet it was necessary. Jesus submits to this baptism of repentance in order to more fully identify with with the humanity that he created a sign of solidarity that begins at the banks of the Jordan River, culminating in his cross and resurrection. And it seems to me that this is the message that Jesus sends us, that first and foremost, our God knows us. He identifies, he understands our sufferings. He understands our humanity, our weaknesses, and the needs that we have to make those changes in our lives. He understands us. He understands that we want to live our lives better. He understands that we want to be more joyful, more meaningful, that we long for a better life, that there is a desire for an inner transformation of heart, to be a better people, to live our lives in a better way, in a better state. He understands understands our resolutions. And it is by his power and by his grace that he draws us into a greater communion with himself. But only if we want it. Only if we go to the Jordan River like the others. Only if there is still that outward expression of an inner desire for a greater life, a more joy, a deeper relationship with God. Repentance, then, I think we could use that in, in regards to resolutions. Repentance and resolutions are basically the same thing. To make a firm amendment, to make a change, to find a solution to a problem, to go to Jesus. To ask for his help. 
to drench us, not simply with water, the waters of baptism, which we've been drenched with already, but to drench us with his grace to find a more fruitful and more meaningful life, not just as a person, not just to want to cook better or to read more and watch less TV, but to be a better Catholic, to be a better and more faith-filled person, to love more, to listen first, to pray, to listen, to love. Every day then affords that opportunity for us to go to Jesus, to stand on the banks of the Jordan River in solidarity with our Lord, with our resolutions, with our repentance, with our sins, to ask his forgiveness, to make those changes, if we want them, if we choose it. And there he's ready to pour out his spirit upon us, to show us that he stands in solidarity with our needs, that he understands the problems and the difficulties that we face in our lives. There he stands in the waters with us and for us, ready to drench us with his grace so that we might find, might find ourselves in greater solidarity, in greater communion with our God. And so let us pray today, Jesus, meek and humble of heart, touch our hearts and make them like your own.